sound of a mighty rushing wind and it's closer now than it's ever been I can almost hear the trumpet as Gabriel sounds the call and at the midnight cry When Jesus said, oh, on a cloud to call his children, the dead in the righteous Prophecies fulfilling and signs of the times they're appearing everywhere. I can almost hear the fathers. He says, Son, go get your cheese. Pride of Christ arise when Jesus dead all on a cloud to call his children the dead in Christ arise to meet him in me. That remain, we will be quickly changed at the midnight cry when Jesus comes again, and then those that remain. Good morning, everybody, and welcome to this morning service from the Pentecostal Holiness Church here in Whithorn. And did you know that prophetic, not pathetic, prophetic song, The Midnight Cry, tells of the signs of the times, the prophecies being fulfilled, the soon coming again of Jesus, and how the dead in Christ and those who are still alive in Christ 
shall be taken up to meet him in the air. And those times are clearly coming soon. Amen. But they overcame in the early church the totalitarian state. Mm. And now, Lindsay, we're living in an era, would you believe it, where it is banned to sing hymns in church. How they came the totality, how they overcame the totalitarian state is our subject today. Thank you, Lindsay. Thank you. Father, in the name of Jesus, we come in these days when him singing has been banned in the so-called church. How we stand here in the name of the Lord to proclaim that as they overcame totalitarianism in the early church, how Daniel overcame totalitarianism under the kingship of Darius, how Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego refused to bow down to the illegal laws of the emperor of the land. Today, we have scousers leading the way. Oh, you would not believe it. We want to bring the church back to the early days. Days in which... There was no, toler to no toleration for totalitarianism. Say that. That's a tongue twister. No toleration for totalitarianism. No toleration for totalitarianism. There you are. Such were the pioneers of the early days. Nothing would stop them praising the Lord. No virus, no disease. You wouldn't believe it. There's now a pub in Liverpool called the Three Bell Ends with a depiction of Boris Johnson, Matt Hancock and I think Chris Whitty with big bells on top of their heads. One pub, or rather one gym in Liverpool, staying open despite the lockdown, was visited by armed police, insisting they close down. They refused. On the threat of gunfire. We find a thousand pound and told it would be two thousand in three hours unless they're closed. These are the days which the early church lived under. The difference being, however, that in those days it was not the pub or the gym leading the way, it was the church. The church militant. The church on fire. Our local kirk here in Witton will be meeting in their masks. Re, re, not singing hymns. But this was not the way in the early days. And not in the early days of evangelicals and Pentecostals in the early 20th century. I read from my newspaper, World Conquest of the Worldwide Evangelistic Crusade, under the heading, How Pioneers Dig In! And an article by Will Purvis. Those first few weeks on entering the mission field are rough sleeping, rough going, sleeping anywhere, eating anything, doing any job. And what a climate. But do they care? Have they not entered the southern guros, the people whom for so long 
They were forbidden to enter as being too dangerous. And now the church in Britain, in fear of coronavirus, refuses to sing praises to the Lord. The Bible declares, let everything that have breath praise the Lord. They refuse to sing praises to the Lord. Continues Will Purvis. There is no station. We have to build one. Meanwhile, we use a small native hut as a dining room. And the Chapmans use it as a bedroom. My bedroom, attached to the newly erected garage, has no doors or windows yet, so anything can enter. So far, in three months, I have found three snakes under my bed. We are dealing with a different church today afraid to sing the praises of the Lord and here is a man finding three snakes under his bed a concession of ten yards square was granted by the French government Frank Miller came and took charge of the brick laying the garage was built first we then commenced the station house and now the walls and roof are completed and I am busy plastering. A job I've never done before. I'm glad it wasn't me. The house decorator puts wallpaper on upside down where the Bible says they set the whole nation upside down. Well, I set... Um, as I did on one occasion, wallpaper upside down. A carriage was built first. The walls and roof, he was busy plastering. The experience gained while building the new hostel in London has proved valuable. The popular idea that a missionary only preaches to a group of credulous natives under a palm tree is a myth. A missionary has to be a jack of all trades and a walking encyclopedia. And what a climate. I have to put my clothes under the blankets to keep them dry for the morning. Envelopes stick, pencils split, bread grows mushrooms overnight, and all leather turns moldy. Thunderstorms come every day. This is the mission field of the 1930s. My dad undertook. You'd not find him having a virus stopping the praising of the Lord. Most of the people are fetishists and are steeped in superstition with groves of fetishes, bottles, porcupine quills, feathers, or curiously shaped wood. On Sunday, we have a service of 60 people in our church, which is a warehouse built in mud and thatch and kindly lent us by a native Christian trader from the Gold Coast. Ten young men of different tribes show a desire to follow Jesus. Umi is a splendid centre for evangelization. In the area of 150 miles by 80 miles, we are the only gospel witness among 30,000 people. We come in contact with six different tribes. No missionary has ever been there before. When I see the Scousers meeting together, getting together, taking on the virus, I'm reminded that the science is not agreed. The Bannington statement is clear. Lockdowns do not work. Even the World Health Organization 
has declared that lockdowns do not work. Even Captain Tom has come out with his concerns over future lockdowns suppressing the needs of the elderly people. Oh, it's time to make a stand, all right. Paul and Silas made a stand so great and refused to come under the totalitarian rule of the Romans. They fearlessly preached the gospel. You would not have them suppressing the praises of our Lord. Surely you must believe that as we praise the Lord, he protects us. Surely we must believe there is a greater power than a government who would look to lock up the people in their small corners so that they cannot go for their cancer care, cannot go for their heart care cannot meet the needs of their mental health, surely the church needs to rise up and say that if our nation humbles itself before God, gets on its knees and confesses its sin, one such sin appears in the British church newspaper of the 25th of September 2020. This is what needs to be tackled. These are the lawbreakers. Not the scousers in the gyms. Not the scousers in the pubs who keep their establishments open. Where is the real crime? What is the greatest reason? The greatest instigator? Of this coronavirus. Yes it's deliberate. Yes it was made in a lab. Yes it was let loose from Wuhan. Yes it's all an idea. To bring about an antichrist order. A world order ruling the world. We know all that. But God uses that. For nations which sin against him. What is the greatest sin. Of our generation. And the reason why government is behaving the way it is. The British Church newspaper has it. Abortion statistics released by the departments of health. Perhaps it's to the abortion clinics we need to send our armed police rather than the innocent gym owner finding him a thousand pounds for the first time, three hours later, two thousand times. I want to hear of churches being fined, just as the church of John MacArthur in California, who refused to lock down, who refused to not praise the Lord, who continued his ministry despite of false government legislation, just as Daniel did. Oh, there is biblical account of the breaking of apparent laws, but they're always the breaking of totalitarian laws, not that of a sovereign parliament who debates and goes through the issues and then pace passes or fails to pass a particular law. These are edicts of state. I hear of young men being found with drugs which could kill a whole youth generation of a whole city. Getting fines of minimal amounts. One gym owner gets a fine of a thousand pound under threat of armed police. So where is the outrage? 
the outrage I tell you today and God is saying it is in the abortion clinic that if a nation sows death then that it shall reap. Abortion statistics released by the Department of Health on the 10th of September show that 109,836 abortions were performed for English and Welsh residents between the 1st of January and 30th of June 2020. These are the deaths which God is concerned about. 2019 saw the highest number of abortions ever recorded in England and Wales at 200,608 200, over the full year. And they're going up. This is the crime against God. What is the church doing? Nothing. declares the British Church newspaper, this significant rise in abortion coincides with allowing DIY home abortions in the UK. According to a leaked urgent email sent by a regional chief midwife in NHS England on the escalating risks of DIY home abortions, two women have died after taking these home abortion pills. This government is apparently in the business of saving lives. I don't see it. I see 200,000 innocent lives having been murdered by a government which sends armed police to a gym owner in Liverpool, fining him a thousand pounds. He's killed nobody. The figures are that only 1.8% of COVID cases come from gyms. The figures are that only 3% of COVID cases, the vast majority of which are not serious, come from hospitality. Yet the pubs are closed. Not out of revival as in the Hebrides. but from a government which deliberately slaughters 200,608 innocent lives and then looks to, 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 to lock down a city like Liverpool under totalitarianism under the apparent name of saving lives. I don't see it. 1.8% of COVID cases from a gym. 3% from hospitality. 100% death in the abortion clinic. So what is to be locked down? The city of Liverpool? Or the places of iniquity which kill the innocent child? Abortion provider BPAS had also announced it was investigating a further eight cases of women taking DIY home abortion pills beyond the 10-week limit, raising questions over what checks. So we're learning not only do these medical procedures kill the innocent child, they also kill the murderous woman. And we wonder why we're not protected from the... I'll tell you how to protect the pandemic. You don't lock down the people. You set them free to queue outside the churches to beg mercy off God. As King George VI knew in the Second World War, calling national days of prayer. But this is not enough now. We need national days of prayer and repentance. 
I've given you the death figures of abortion. I've given you the death figures from gyms and hospitality in relation to COVID. There is no comparison. A certain woman named Nydia, a seller of purple in the city of Thyatira. This is Acts chapter 16. The early adventures of the early church. A normal day in the life of the church. Worship God. Heard to whose heart the Lord opened. That she attended unto the things which were spoken of Paul. It's time now that we all attend to the things spoken of by Paul. When she was baptized and their household, she besought us, saying, it, If ye have judged me to be faithful to the Lord, come into my house and abide there. And she constrained us. And it came to pass, as we went to prayer, a certain damsel, possessed with a spirit of divination, met us, which brought her masters, much gain by soothsaying. In our nation, we passed the law to permit witchcraft at the end of the 1950s, and it has soared in the New Age movement ever since. The Bible says that Jesus came that we may have life and life in abundance, but the devil comes to kill, steal, and destroy. Isn't it time the nation locked down the devil by calling upon the name of Jesus, repenting of our sin, restoring true marriage to the nation, and the preeminence of Christ? Constitutionkeepers.org Yet much gain in our nation is being brought by soothsaying, the occult, even watching television, there was even an advert for a casino relating to the tribes of Horus. And we wonder why we're under a pandemic. The same followed Paul with us and cried, saying, These men are the servants of the Most High God, which show us unto the way of salvation. This did she many days. We've had them too. Typical Jezebels who come in looking to build you up and then pull you down. But Paul, being grieved, turned, said to the spirit, I command thee in the name of Jesus Christ to come out of her. He came out the same hour, a mocking spirit. When her masters saw the hope of their gains was gone, they caught Paul and Silas, drew them into the marketplace unto the rulers. Lindsay, this is our life, this is our story, this is our song. Praising my Savior all the day long. This is my story. This is my song. Praising my Savior all the day long. Except in Britain. Where it's forbidden. But it is allowed by British law, apparently, 
to kill 208,000 innocents from the womb. This is my story, this is my song, praising my Savior all the day long. This is my story, this is my song, praising my Savior all the day long. The witness from California of Pastor John MacArthur is he refused to lock down his church. And they came with uh, thousands and thousands. I think his first fine was $10,000. His next one, 20000 Next one, 30000 Next one, 50000 so the fines went up time after time after time from the woke government of California. How did he respond? This is my story. This is my song. Praising my Savior. Oh, when will the church have the guts of, yes, Pastor John MacArthur, but also the scousers in the pub, the three bell ends in Liverpool, of the gym in Liverpool. They have more spirituality about them than practically any church I know in Britain for they have the guts to take on totalitarianism. They have the guts to stand for justice. The Liverpool Football Club Committee of Women taking on the totalitarian rule of Sheffield which denied their crime and bringing justice to the 96. It is this how God is looking to restore to the church. He's looking for the Daniel who will continue to, to pray despite of government's edict. He's looking for those who will continue to praise the Lord despite of government's edict. He's looking for those who would continue to follow the Lord and be prepared to be thrown in the fiery furnace just as Shadrach, Meshach and the Bendigo were. This is the church militant. The church which produces newspapers like this one called World Congre Conquest. The church which produces the war cry as General Boo did. Nothing would stop him witnessing the gospel. Do you think he would stop for social distancing if it would mean a man or woman or child going to hell? I think not. And neither was it with Paul and Silas. They were brought to the magistrates. How many times have we been brought to the magistrates, Lindsay? Legal case after legal case, yet in the local kirk here to use it against. Oh, they've been to court, you know. Well, so have Paul and Silas. They were brought to the magistrate. That's what it means to be a Christian. If you've not been to court because of your Christianity in Britain, then I question whether you are a Christian or not. The magistrates rent off their clothes commanded to beat them and when they had laid many stripes upon them they cast them into prison charging the jailer to keep them safely you all know those who know the story what this was leading up to the church is having one arm placed behind its back in most cases two and observing laws which go against the word of God. 
It's against the law of God and the Queen promised God specifically in 1953 to uphold his laws which does not include the slaughter of over 200,000 children from the womb. When they had laid many stripes upon them, they cast them into prison, charging the jailer to keep them safely. Those with the knowledge of Roman history would know that the jailer was on the personal responsibility for his life to keep them there. The jailer threw them in the inner prison made their feet fast in the stocks and then came the midnight cry. Hallelujah! Yes. <laughs> they were beaten, they were striped. They broke the apparent laws, I say apparent laws. They were set up And there they were, where he could have moaned, where he could have groaned, but chose to praise the Lord. They prayed, sang praises unto God. The prisoners heard them. Suddenly there was a great earthquake. So that the foundations of the prison were shaken. Immediately all the doors were opened. Everyone's bands were loosed. The keeper of the prison, awaking out of his sleep, seeing the prison doors open, drew out his sword and would have killed himself, supposing that the prisoners had fled. But Paul cried with a loud voice, saying, Do thyself no harm. We are all here. Called for a light, sprang in, came trembling, fell down before Paul and Silas. Brought them out and said, Sirs, must, what must I do to be saved? They said, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ to all, to all that were in his house. He took them the same hour of the night, washed their stripes and was baptized. He and all his straightway. There are times that we need to praise the Lord and this is such a time in our nation. On behalf of the nation, I as Prime Minister would repent before God and immediately save every child about to be slaughtered from the room. Immediately repeal an apparent act that brought together man and man and woman and woman. Return to Ephesians 5. For man being joined to one wife and proclaiming the preeminence of Christ. Say to the nation, I'm going to open every church building for you to go and to sing with everything that you have. This is my story. This is my song. Praising my Savior all the day long. 
Will you join me in this prayer for nations to understand that the answer to coronavirus is not in the science, but is in repentance. During Second World War, Hitler representing totalitarianism had far more in the way of military might. But what he did not have was a nation at prayer. And as our nation goes to prayer and sings his praises, what I would do immediately here in Whithorn is open the kick for those to come and praise the Lord. And indeed, that's what we've done here in our studio this morning. We have praised the Lord. Duncan Campbell declared, in God's creative plan, man holds a unique place, distinct in this respect, that he alone of God's creation is capable of God consciousness. And this consciousness or feeling is as much a verity as any other fact of human consciousness. And I put it to you today that this is what we have as the church within us. Power and authority over sickness and disease. But as far as the nation is concerned, unless the nation gets on its knees before God and repents of its wicked ways, it will then come under the kingdom of Babylon, the kingdom of the Antichrist. This, in my view, being the actual dress rehearsal for that which is to quickly come. And the rapture for those who stay on the narrow path rather than the wide path of acceptability and respectability to the God of this world mm -hmm. rather than to the God of heaven. Lindsay, come and sing the God on the Mount. We walk the mountain tops today. Yes. And given his word, the nation needing to repent before him to be free of the Babylonian curse of totalitarianism. Amen. Thank you, David. That powerful message. And this is so important, this song. The God of the mountain is the same God in the valley. And as we're going through a valley, we need to remember Psalm 23 and pray and repent before God. Because the psalmist David said, Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, Thou art with me, and thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. That's proof of this song. It's a biblical song. God on the mountain. Life is easy when you're up on the mountain. of mine like you've never known but then time change and you're down in the valley don't lose faith for you're never alone for the God of the mountain he knows God in the valley when things go wrong, he'll make them right. And the God of the good times, he's still God in the bad times. The God of the day, still God of the night. You talk of faith. 
faith when you're up on the mountain. Oh, but the talk comes easy when life's at its best. But it's down in the valley Oh, trials and temptations That's when faith is Really put to the test For the God of the mountain He's so God in the valley When things so wrong Make them right. And the God of the good times, He's so good in the bad times. The God of the day is still God of the night. The God of the day is still God of the night. Hallelujah. He's still the same. The same God. Yesterday, today and forever. He's just waiting to hear us cry to Him. Amen. Thank you for being with us. And those who will continue to watch this as well in future days. This morning service from Pentecostal Holiness Church here in Whithorn. God bless you. Be strong in the Lord and in the power of His might, says Ephesians 6. Bye for now. God bless you. Remember the psalm says, My safety cometh from the Lord who has made heaven and earth. So keep safe in Him. Bye.